It's been a while since I was planning to make this video. I had lots of requests from my students, from friends, from my YouTube viewers that we want to create a web API, something like an end-to-end -end solution using Microsoft Flow. And here it is. I want to show you how you can create a web API that you can submit the request to the API that has Flow backbone. Flow does the job and return the result in JSON format. Let's see how we can do it. Let me give you an introduction of what we are going to do today. We want to use Microsoft Flow that exposes a web API. And this web API, we want to call it from Postman. From Postman, we call the web API. The web API should go to SharePoint Online, get some items from SharePoint Online, and return the response to Postman as a response of this web API. And to make it more interesting, this web API should accept the product category and returns all the products in that category. So we go back to our SharePoint, and inside SharePoint, we have a list called products. And this is the source of information that should compile the response that is received by Postman. Now, let's start by creating the basic flow that will do the job. As always, I go to flow.microsoft.com. I click on Create, and I want to create an instant flow. And this flow, I just click on Skip, and I want to create an HTTP request response. Forget about SharePoint or anything else. At the moment, we want to create something like a Hello World application. This Hello World application is going to look something like this. I go for Request, and the trigger is when the HTTP request is received. So I click on it, and this flow is fired when the HTTP request is received. As soon as I save it, it gives me a URL. So if I click on Show Advanced Options, I need to set the method to something relevant. By default, it's get, so I can go for get. If you want to submit something to the flow uh, as a package of data, probably we go for something more complicated like post. And at the moment, we are good with get. We just add one parameter that's going to be the category or something like that. And after that, we continue with that. So, so far, flow receives the request. Then I need to add another step. That's going to be my response response. And when I click on response, you will find this control. This response returns whatever the answer that the call to this flow should return. So for the body of this one, I just say, hello, world. Every web API should return a status code. By default, status code 200 means success. Let me just give it a name, and I call it Flow Web API Demo. I click on Save, and as soon as I save it, it gives me the URL. So I have the URL of this flow. I click on it, copy it. I open Postman, and I click on New Method should be Get. I just need to paste the URL here, and I click on Send. The call goes successfully, returns the status code 200, which is OK, and here is the response that I get from the Web API. Now let's take it to the next level. To take it to the next level, we need to pass a parameter to this call. So the way that I want to pass the parameter, I want to go to Postman, and among all the parameters that they are there in the header, I want to go to the end and add one more. And this one more is going to be end category electronics. And that's it. And if I tab away, you see that the category comes to the list of headers. Great. But the question is that how can we capture this category in the flow? Let's go back and see how it works. To get a little bit of understanding, I add an action here called Compose. Compose basically 
takes an input and can construct an object. Here we use it as a debugging tool. So for the trigger that comes here, if I click on expressions, I can have trigger output. And trigger outputs basically shows me everything that this request returns. Let me just save it and run this again. So I go back to my postman, I click on send, I get the result, I go back inside flow, and if I click on this flow now, the last call should show me what this query returns. Now, if you look inside this trigger, headers, we don't care. But one parameter here is very interesting. It's called queries. Queries has a category called electronics. So basically, we need to go to the output from this trigger, go to the element called queries, and under queries, we look for category. So the syntax will look like trigger output dot queries dot category. Let's see if we can capture it inside our flow. Edit, compose, and I come here under expressions and I say trigger outputs dot queries dot category. Just making sure everything is okay. I click on okay, save, and let's run it this time and see what we get out of it. Let me click on save. It worked properly. Now let's go back to the flow and see if we could capture this value. Flow Web API demo. This is the last call. And inside it, I have electronics. That's all I needed. Now that we have this value, we can work with it. So let me go back into edit mode. I click on compose. And this compose has the category. Let me just rename it and call it category that I received from the call. And right after that, I need to get values from SharePoint. So I go to SharePoint, SharePoint, and it's going to be get items. Click. Inside SharePoint, I created a list called products, and it has a field called category. So what we are going to do, we want to get the items from this list that the category equals something that we'll receive from the web API call. And here in this example, we are looking for electronics. So I go back to the flow and I pick up this site. I pick up the list that I need to work with. And if I go to the advanced option, I can put a filter here. The OData filter, if you are familiar with OData, that's great. If you are not, I put the link somewhere around here so you can take a look and watch the video and see how OData works. Regardless, at the moment, let's get here. And I'm looking for category equals and the value that I'm getting from Compose, which is category, I need the output. I just need to say save and all the items that it returns, I want to make it the response to this one. So I go to the response, but keep in mind that the item that this one returns, it returns multiple items. I need to package everything into one variable. The simplest way that I can do it, I can add an action called apply to each. When I use apply to each, I can get the value from the get items which returns a list of items. And before that, I want to create a variable called this variable is going to be initialized. And the name of it is going to be products. Type is going to be array. And I don't put any values inside it. I just click on save and under apply to each, I go to add an action. And again, I want to use variables. 
and this time I use I can use append to array variable so I click on this one the array that I have is called products and the value that I want to add is going to be the title so let me find the title under get items there we go I just click on save so I have an array of item and finally for the response instead of hello world I just need to return the array that I created so let me just clear this one and variables products is the variable that I have it's an array so if I click on this one it returns all the products in an array let me just save it and it's time to test it I go back inside postman I click on send and this time I get an array of laptop USB key micro SD card computer mouse and everything else which I go here I can see this is exactly the same list let's try it with something else for example we go back to our postman and this time instead of electronics I search for irons and I click on send and this time it returns these two weird items that I don't even know what they are but these are my irons as easy as that that was all about it thank you for watching and I hope you found this video useful stay tuned for the future videos